Chapter 31. Elliot closed his computer. Only Anastasia had the answers to those questions, whether she really was once someone's shameless mistress who had destroyed the man's family in the end. Keep investigating, Elliot ordered in a low voice. Ray voiced his affirmation and left, after which Elliot's dark gaze fell on a corner. She even gave birth to the child, so what exactly was he expecting? When Erica returned home, she ran back to her room where she dialed Haley's number, for she could only vent her anger to Haley. You caused trouble at Anastasia's company? Haley asked in shock. My dad bought her a house worth eight million behind me and my mom's back. Why wouldn't I be pissed? I can't believe Anastasia could do that. Erica, you have to be careful. You mustn't let her snatch all of your father's property in the end, Haley reminded. Hey, Emph, I'll never let her off the hook and I won't let her live in peace either, Erica seethed. Are you at home, Haley? Let's go out for drinks tonight. Um, I'm not feeling too well these days, so I can't drink for now, Haley declined. You should get someone else to accompany you. Erica sensed that Haley was being exceptionally secretive these days because they used to hang out rather often in the past. Over in the luxurious villa, Haley ended her call with Erica as her gaze darkened. Anastasia's mother had saved Elliot, which meant that Anastasia could exploit that fact to request anything of him. She could even ask to marry him and it would most probably be done. As for the reason why Anastasia hadn't made this request yet, it had to be due to her personality. She was a stubborn person and definitely not one to lose her sense of self over riches. In short, she lived quite the sober life. Hence, she wouldn't marry someone just because she wanted to repay some kindness. She had said in high school that she hated the person who caused her mother's death, so could it be that Anastasia still hated Elliot for that? No matter what might happen, Haley had to stop Anastasia from making that request and the best way to achieve that was to show Anastasia how intimate she herself was with Elliot. Then, Anastasia would hate both herself and Elliot even more. Haley took a glance at the time. It was almost time for people to get off work, so she should also head off and pay Bourgeois a visit. She enjoyed the treatment that was fit for a rich young lady when she drove in the sports car Elliot gave her. Whenever she was on the road before this, she could only admire the rich, beautiful daughters of wealthy families. Now, she herself had become the object of admiration too. All eyes would be on her whenever she stopped on the road. The young men would gape in awe and her vain heart would be immensely satisfied. Haley got on the elevator and headed right for the design department at Bourgeois. Her appearance had brought about the looks of admiration and respect from all the female employees in the office because she was the wife of their boss. She immediately walked to the door of Anastasia's office and proceeded to open the door without so much as a greeting. Anastasia was gathering her things and ready to go home when she saw Haley barging in. Her expression darkened as she asked, what are you here for? Haley was wearing a V-neck dress with a set of jewelry that shone brilliantly on her chest. It was the exact jewelry that was on display that day. She touched it and said to Anastasia, Elliot gave me this. Does it look good on me? If you're looking to show off, you have approached the wrong person. Anastasia stared at Haley coldly since she knew the woman well enough. Haley didn't come from a rich family, but her vanity was second to none. As soon as she received something nice, she would show it off to everyone whom she knew. I'm here to invite Elliot to dinner. We still have a romantic date waiting for us tonight, so I won't hold you up. She was actually here to flaunt her relationship with Elliot, although I have no idea how blind he had to be to see something in you. Anyone with eyes would know that he deserves better, Anastasia retorted mercilessly. Haley's expression sank and she snorted. Anastasia, you don't know how he sees me at all. What right do you have to say that? Then, tell me, how did you reel him in? Chapter 32 That's none of your business. Whatever that needs to happen between us has already happened. You don't know how much he loves me. He gives me everything I ask of him. Haley raised her eyebrow gleefully. Anastasia was stunned for a few seconds. Looks like they have already slept together? Looks like I have underestimated Haley's abilities. Anastasia, 
Don't tell me you have fallen for him too? Haley asked tentatively. What? Are you scared that I'll snatch him from you? Anastasia wasn't stupid. Of course, Haley was scared of her and wouldn't let her live in peace. Why, you won't be able to take him away, hatred flashed across Haley's eyes. Anastasia felt uncomfortable as she recalled the kissing incident in the car last night. If Elia really slept with Haley, Anastasia really didn't want to do anything intimate with him. Don't worry, everything you've used before is dirty to me, she responded coldly. All right, I'll tell Elliot every word you said then, Haley sneered, assuming that Anastasia would be scared because she had said something wrong. On the contrary, Anastasia was quite generous about it. Then, make sure you don't miss even a syllable. Try mimicking my tone so that you can be more convincing as well. Shock was evident in Haley's eyes. Anastasia was exuding confidence from head to toe, which was exactly what Haley was envious about. Haley still left in the end, after which Anastasia let out a sigh. If Haley came looking to show off, she wouldn't be getting what she came for. In the president's office, Haley knocked on the door. Come in, a man's deep and alluring voice responded. She opened the door to see a handsome figure seated on the couch before she called in a sickly sweet voice, Elliot. Elliot narrowed his eyes and asked, Why are you here? I got too bored, so I wanted to go for a walk. With that, Haley bit her red lips in a pitiful manner, then took a seat beside him and stayed silent. What's the matter? Did someone bully you? He could sense that she was upset. I went to see Anastasia just now. I wanted to apologize for what happened last time, but she... But she refused to accept my apology and chase me out. She even said. Elliot frowned. What did she say? She asked about our relationship, so I told her that we have the most intimate relationship. Then, she suddenly said that everything I've used is dirty to her. Haley's eyes were filled with displeasure. Elliot immediately understood that he was the dirty one that the woman mentioned. He couldn't help but snort in secret. Me? Dirty? Then, why did she initiate that kiss last night? Now she's saying that I'm dirty? What an ungrateful woman. Haley was secretly observing the expressions of the man beside her. However, she found him spacing out and lost in his thoughts with no intention of comforting her. Doesn't Elliot know that Anastasia was insulting him? All right, don't come to the company anymore if there's nothing important. There's so much anger in this place that you might get upset again. Elliot quietly comforted her with the intention to instruct her as well. What if I miss you, though? I'll visit you when I have the time. Otherwise, you can just give me a call, message me, or get me on a video call, Elliot looked at Haley. Even though she now gave him a completely different impression from five years ago, he still wouldn't mistreat her. As Haley gazed at the man's perfect profile, she suddenly caught sight of a red mark on his neck. She gasped and hastily leaned closer to him to have a look. Elliot, what happened to your neck? Nothing, it's just an allergic reaction. Elliot adjusted his collar to hide the mark. How did you get it? I'm allergic to seafood, he explained in a low voice as he got up. Please wait while I deal with some emails. Elliot walked over to his desk while Haley went to the washroom to fix her makeup. She rose to her full height and walked to the washroom, after which she opened the door and entered a cubicle. As soon as she went in, a few female employees also entered. Girls, I saw it clearly when I went to deliver the documents earlier. That mark on President Pressgrave's neck is a hickey. Chapter 33 Really? Then, is his girlfriend showing off their relationship on purpose? That would explain why she would leave a mark on a spot as obvious as his neck. Yes. This means that President Pressgrave is a man as hot as fire. I wonder how it feels like to stir things up on the bed with him. Wait, who in our company has the ability to get on his bed? I think Anastasia has a good chance. She's beautiful, of course, but she has also dodged getting fired despite all the trouble she caused. I won't believe it if she isn't involved with President Pressgrave in that sense. You do know that he fired Mr. Lawrence the other day, right? And Mr. Lawrence only committed a tiny mistake. 
Could it be that the hickey wasn't from his girlfriend but Anastasia instead, and she placed it there as a challenge to President Presgrave's girlfriend? The three female employees allowed their imagination to run wild, as if they were actually writers of detective novels. In the cubicle, Haley's expression kept shifting. She had already suspected that the mark on Elliot's neck wasn't due to an allergy, but she never expected it to be a hickey. The girlfriend they were referring to must be Haley herself, but the hickey had nothing to do with her. If it wasn't her, then some other woman must have done it. Who was with him last night? Was it really Anastasia? Haley was green with so much jealousy that it seemed to overwhelm her. If not Anastasia, then who? Was there any other woman by Elliot's side that he would willingly get so intimate with? No matter who it was, Haley wanted her gone. Elliot could only be hers and hers alone. She returned to the office to see Ray sitting on the couch, but Elliot was nowhere in sight. Where is Elliot? Apologies, Miss Seymour. President Pressgrave had matters to take care of at the main office, so he asked me to take you home instead, said Ray courteously. Immense disappointment welled up in Haley's heart. Although Elliot had fulfilled her material needs generously, he had never been intimate with her before. She felt like they were both close and distant at the same time. Moreover, she had helplessly fallen for him. She would think about him every day to the point where she wished to offer herself to him as soon as possible. She didn't want some material compensation. She wanted his everything to be his Mrs. Pressgrave. I drove here myself. Ray, was Elliot working overtime last night? Haley asked curiously. Ray nodded. Yes, President Pressgrave has been working overtime in the company these days. Haley pursed her lips. Then, tell him to rest more often and don't overwork himself, of course, Ray smiled. Then, Haley took her bag and left. She couldn't help but wonder who was the woman accompanying Elliot last night. At this moment, Haley's phone rang. It was a call from Erica. Haley, I'm sad. Drink with me, please. Haley herself wasn't in a good mood either, so she responded, Sure, where are you? I'll come and get you. An hour later, she had removed all the jewelry she was wearing and tied up her hair to meet Erica. When Erica saw Haley, she felt that Haley was much prettier with a clearer skin. What are you up to these days? Erica asked as she sat with Haley in a music bar. I'm frequenting a beauty salon these days. Haley also knew that she had become much prettier. Oh, hey, are you wearing that latest outfit from Chanel? I saw it online before. It's a high quality replica. It was difficult for me to purchase it. Haley immediately lied. Erica hastily scooted over to touch the fabric. This fabric is excellent. It's like the real deal. Where did you get it? I want one too. It was the only one in stock. With that, Haley changed the topic. How are you these days? That be Chi Chi and Anastasia ruined my family. My dad is spending less time at home now as he's choosing to head to her place whenever he has the time. He was even at her place last night until around 10 something and it was almost early morning when he came back. Why? A curious Haley asked. Anastasia said that she had to work overtime, so she asked my dad to babysit her son. I think she's just ordering my dad around so that she can have fun outside. Haley could feel her mind buzzing. Ray had said that Elliot was working overtime in the company last night and Anastasia was also working overtime at the same place and time. Do such coincidences exist? Chapter 34 Could it be that they had done something unspeakable in the office? Was Anastasia lying when she said that she didn't like Elliot? Was she already entangled with Elliot a long time ago? So, Anastasia had intentionally planted the hickey on Elliot's neck for Haley to see. Hatred and jealousy burned brightly in Haley's eyes as she thought, Anastasia is really wretched. Anastasia said she didn't like him, but she was secretly seducing him. How did she become so cunning in five years? Haley decided she could not underestimate Anastasia after all. How shameless. Haley growled through gritted teeth. Erica immediately agreed. I know, right? She has no shame. She grabbed a bunch of my hair today and caused my face to be swollen. I won't let her off the hook so easily.
Haley's words weren't only said on Erica's behalf, but it was also expressed for her own sake. How old is Anastasia's son? Haley asked curiously. Erica immediately took out her phone and flipped through her album before she stopped at a few photos. Here, I secretly took a few photos at home. I wonder who this mutt's dad is. When Haley took the phone and saw the boy's face in the photo, her pupils immediately wavered. She was so shocked that her mind went completely blank in an instant. How can this be? How can Anastasia's son resemble Elliot so much? She continued to look through the photos, and the more she did so, the more terrified she became. Her suspicions were even turning into confirmation. Anastasia's son wasn't any mutt from a random man. He was conceived from a seed planted by Elliot himself five years ago and she had quietly delivered the child abroad. How old is he? That wretched Anastasia claimed that he's three, but I don't believe it. No three-year-old would be this tall, Erica answered, thinking that Anastasia was full of lies. As Haley looked at the child on the phone screen, she could only feel a hand close around her heart and was close to gasping. Anastasia didn't know that Elliot was the man from five years ago, so she naturally didn't know that her son was Elliot's child. Now, Anastasia's relationship with Elliot had turned far more complicated than her mother's sacrifice in exchange for Elliot's safety. Now, the most important thing was that her son had the blood of the Pressgrave family running in his veins. Haley was on the verge of despair. How was Anastasia so lucky? Just one night five years ago and she already has Elliot's child? She decided that she had to be together with Elliot as soon as possible. It was only through having Elliot's child that she would gain the necessary power to fight Anastasia. Then, Anastasia's son would mean nothing whereas it would be her own son being the heir of the Pressgrave family's empire. With that in mind, Haley seemed to have revived herself. Haley, why are you zoning out? Is everything okay these days? Erica noticed that Haley had a dark expression. 11 TL, it's nothing. I was just too busy, so I couldn't think straight. Haley lied while wearing an exhausted front. Erica didn't doubt her. If she had known that Haley was living the luxurious life and consuming only the finest goods possible, she would probably be mad with jealousy. It was because in Erica's eyes, Haley was always following her. Hence, this was Haley's deepest hatred. She had lived like a dog before, where no one acknowledged her. She swore that she would someday become the young mistress of the Pressgrave family so that she could finally be proud and respected by everyone else. After getting off from work that day, Anastasia went to pick up her son. When they arrived at their little home at night, she cooked some dishes, one of which was her son's favorite chicken casserole. The boy could wolf down the entire thing. Mommy, Grandpa said that you're not young anymore and he wants you to find a life partner. The little guy suddenly piped up. She couldn't help bursting into laughter. I have you with me and we're best partners, aren't we? Mommy, Grandpa also asked me who my daddy is. Can you ask him to come back? The little boy asked. Chapter 35 Anastasia stopped laughing and looked at her son earnestly. Jared, let's not look for daddy, okay? Mommy can raise you all by herself. Grandpa said that it's not right of my daddy to avoid taking responsibility, though. He has to be responsible towards you and me, the little boy said with an adult-like expression. Anastasia was speechless. Why did her father talk about such things with her son? Grandpa said that he will grow old and one day won't be able to take care of us anymore. She could now feel the tears coming. Her father was worried that he would grow old and frail, hence unable to take care of her and her son. She tried to suppress the tears as she responded, Be good, Jared. I'll become strong and take care of both you and Grandpa. Okay, I'll also grow up quickly and be very tall, so I can take care of Mommy and Grandpa. With that, the little guy returned to scarfing down his dinner. Anastasia's heart softened at his words. Her son was everything to her, so she absolutely must build a protective environment for him. The next day was a Saturday. It was early in the morning and she thought she wouldn't have to go to work, but then she received a call from Felicia. Anastasia, 
why aren't you here for overtime? I have to. Anastasia sat up and placed her hand to her forehead as she asked. Why was it necessary to work overtime when they were the local branch? Because we're putting out the newest release soon. It's customary to work overtime during these few weeks. Come on over now. In that case, can I bring my son to the office? Anastasia hastily asked. All right, sure, Felicia agreed, for she knew Anastasia was a single mother. Anastasia immediately woke her son up with kisses and told him, Jared, let's go. Come with me to the office for overtime. The little guy seemed to be still half asleep, but he nodded anyway. She led her son downstairs and hailed a cab to the office. She had bought some bread on the way for breakfast and it was already 9.50 a.m. when she arrived at the Campana Grace was bringing in coffee when she saw the cute boy on the couch, which immediately stunned her. Wow, oh my goodness, he's too cute. The little guy wore a black t-shirt paired with jeans. His black hair had covered his full little forehead and a pair of huge bright eyes shone like jewels as they peeked out from under his dense and curly eyelashes. His features were exquisite and pretty, like a beautiful doll. Hey, little guy, did you get your eyelashes curled when you were still in your mother's stomach? They're so long and curly, Grace said in admiration. Hearing that, Anastasia could only say that the host that night wasn't too shabby himself either. As Anastasia was perusing the documents with her head lowered, Grace took the opportunity to reach out with her hand. The little guy looked at her in anger. Miss, can you stop pinching my cheeks? It hurts. Sorry, sorry. Your face is just so squishy that I couldn't help it. I'll stop now, Grace hastily apologized. At this moment, Anastasia answered a call from Felicia. Come to my office for a bit. Grace, I'm going to Director Evans' office for a while. Look after Jared for me while I'm gone, of course. No problem, Grace gestured with an OK sign. At the underground car park of Bourgeois, a low-key yet luxurious Bentley had just pulled up whereby Elliot alighted from the driver's seat. He had just received a call from Larry, informing him that there was an important document he needed to sign. It was then that he realized that the entire bourgeois staff was working overtime. Larry offered to bring the document over to him, but since Elliot was coincidentally in the area, he came to the office on his own instead. He pressed the elevator button and rode the elevator up to his office. Grace played with the little kid for a while before remembering that there was a document she was supposed to get signed. She told the child, Jared, promise me you'll not wander anywhere. I'll come back right after I deliver a document, okay? Okay. The little guy nodded obediently. She hadn't been gone for long when Jared needed to head to the bathroom. He opened the office door and ran out to the bathroom located on the same floor, only to find a sign saying under maintenance hanging outside. The little guy immediately ran to the elevator and pressed the button to head up. Soon, the elevator doors opened with a ding. He looked up to see a tall man in the elevator. As soon as he raised his head, he asked, Sir, where is the bathroom? I need to pee. Upon the child's sudden questioning, Elliot was surprised before his reserved dark gaze fell on the child whose height only reached his thighs. He was stunned for a few seconds as he saw the child's lifted face. Chapter 36 Where did this boy come from? Sir, please hurry up and take me there. I can't hold it in anymore. The little kid gripped Elliot's pants as he shouted with a red face. Elliot responded in a low voice, All right, I'll take you there. The elevator doors opened with a ding. He bent over and carried the child in his arms as he strode toward the bathroom. Elliot took the child inside and guarded as the little guy began to relieve himself. After the little guy was done, he sighed in contentment before he finally remembered to thank this handsome passerby. Thank you, sir. What's your name? Why are you here? Elliot couldn't help but ask in curiosity. My name is Jared Tillman and I came to accompany my mommy to work, Jared answered in a clear voice. Elliot frowned. Is your mother Anastasia Tillman? Do you know my mommy, sir? He was only taking a stab in the dark as well. Anastasia was a single mother, so her son probably had her last name. The little guy ran out and washed his hands. 
As he looked at the reflection of the tall man in the mirror, he suddenly commented, Sir, we look like each other. Elliot froze before he earnestly examined their faces and realized that they had indeed resembled each other. Their eyes, eyebrows, nose, lips, and even the curve of their chins were exactly the same. Sir, are you single? Do you have a girlfriend? The inquisitive little guy raised his head and asked. Elliot could see what the kid was thinking behind those huge eyes of his. However, despite knowing the child's intentions, he told the truth. Yes, I'm single. I don't have a girlfriend. Then, will you consider my mommy? She's young, beautiful, and has a good figure. She's also kind and gentle on top of cooking very well. The little guy began advertising his mother. He wanted to solve his grandpa's troubles and also to look for a man to take care of his mommy. Surprise colored Elliot's eyes. This little guy is pretty interesting, he thought. He narrowed his eyes and responded, Then, you'll have to ask her whether she's willing to marry me. If she is, I'll be willing to take her hand. The little guy blinked with his large eyes, happy to know that everyone had loved his mother. After all, this handsome man said he was willing to marry her right off the bat. All right, I'll ask for you. What's your name? The little guy nodded earnestly, walking toward the elevator when he was done washing his hands. My name is Elliot Pressgrave, the man replied in his deep and alluring voice. Okay, got it. The little guy committed it to memory. For some reason, he wanted to stay with this handsome man for a bit longer. Sir? My mommy is in a meeting now, so can I go to your office to play? Of course, Elliot nodded. He was just leading the little guy out when two employees came walking from the other direction. They were instantly shocked when they saw the little guy next to Elliot. President Pressgrave has a son. President Pressgrave, I assume this is your son? He's too cute. Yes, he looks just like you. The two female employees exclaimed in surprise. Elliot frowned as he looked at the little guy next to him. Do we look so similar? Me and this kid? Then, he looked at the little guy. Even though the child wasn't his son, he somehow still felt attached to him and couldn't help but want to pamper him. His grandmother was right to urge him to take care of the child because he could feel an indescribable affinity to this child. In the meeting room, Grace opened the door and rushed in with a panicked expression. Anastasia, Jared is missing. What? Anastasia immediately rose to her feet and ran out of the meeting room without another word. She saw that her son was indeed missing from her office, and Grace had also clarified that she had searched the entire floor, but to no avail. At this moment, an assistant arrived from the eighth floor to deliver documents and said to Anastasia, Miss Tillman, I saw a child with President Pressgrave just now. Chapter 37 Anastasia hurriedly took the elevator to the eighth floor. She stood in front of the president's office and knocked on the door before she opened it without even waiting for a response. When she spotted her son seated on Elliot's couch, she immediately sighed in relief before shouting in anger, Jared, are you trying to give me the fright of my life? Why did you run off like that? Jared didn't expect his actions to have frightened his mother so much that she went pale. He hastily ran over and wrapped his arms around her leg. Mommy, I'm sorry. It's all my fault. Anastasia also realized that she had overreacted, so she hugged him and sighed again. Don't do that again. Go back to work and leave him to me. I'll babysit him for you. A man's voice rang out from behind them. She was stunned. This man must be trying to repay some kindness, but she didn't want to accept any help from him apart from work. Moreover, she didn't feel the need to bother him with a task like babysitting. It's fine. Thanks for the offer, a reluctant Anastasia replied. Mommy, I like being with Mr. Handsome. Can you let me stay here until you get off work, please? The little guy asked happily with obvious anticipation on his face. Anastasia was speechless at her son's behavior. He could have chosen anyone to stick to, but of all the people, he chose Elliot. No, come back to my office. I still have a meeting to attend, but I'll treat you to something lovely for lunch. I don't want to. I want to play here in Mr. Handsome's office. The little guy began to sulk, which was actually rare for him. 
Knowing that the meeting was still ongoing with the launch event for their new release on the agenda, Anastasia gritted her teeth. She looked up at the impressive man in front of her before saying, Then, please help me look after him for a while. Sure, Elliot nodded. Jared, don't cause any trouble, okay? Mommy is going back to the meeting. I'll be good, the little guy promised. Anastasia turned and left for the meeting. The little guy happily sat on the couch again, then fished out a Rubik's Cube from his backpack and began playing with it. Elliot sat right opposite him and watched the little guy skillfully rotate the cube. Jared completed the puzzle within two minutes, a clear indication of his marvelous IQ. Who taught you that? I learned it myself. Mr. Handsome, how long would you take to complete it? The little guy laughed as he asked. Elliot took the cube and scrambled it, then he completed the puzzle within 10 seconds. He threw the item back to the little guy, who gapped as he looked at Elliot in admiration. You're awesome, sir. It was just a little kid's praise, but Elliot felt extremely good about it. He grinned and commented, You're quite good yourself too. If one were to chance upon the scene, one would be amazed to discover that the two looked exactly the same when they smiled. Anastasia returned to the meeting room. Fortunately, Felicia didn't say much about the interlude and it was time for lunch by the time the meeting was done. Anastasia was wondering where she should bring her son for lunch when the landline rang. She reached over and answered, Hello. Jared is coming with me for lunch. Come and join us. We're at the restaurant opposite the company. The man's low voice sounded, apparently not taking no for an answer. Her mind began to buzz. Elliot has taken my son to lunch? Without my permission? Damn, this man just took my son away without any notice. How disrespectful. Anastasia grabbed her phone and bag before she hastily went out. The restaurant opposite the company was of a higher status, and when she walked into the hall, she immediately spotted her son and Elliot seated by the window. Anastasia took a deep breath and walked over to sit next to her son. This lunch is my treat, as my thanks to President Presgrave for taking care of my son. With that, she finally felt better about the situation. Elliot gazed at her with a meaningful gaze, his thoughts complicated. This woman had refused even a little bit of kindness from him. Mommy, Mr. Handsome only needs 10 seconds to solve the Rubik's Cube, the little guy commented as he wanted his mommy to know how excellent Mr. Handsome was as a person. She smiled carelessly. Oh, really? After having their orders taken, they were served some ice cream before the meal. The little guy happily took some right away and began to eat. As Anastasia knew that Jared had stomach problems since he was young, he couldn't eat too much alkaline food. Hence, she suggested, let me try some too. Here, mommy. The little guy scooped some ice cream up for her, which she hastily ate. Moments after that, he scooped up some more and looked toward the man sitting opposite them. Sir, do you want some too? Anastasia immediately panicked as she hastily stopped him. Jared, I ate from this spoon earlier, so you mustn't offer it to someone else. It's not polite. However, the man sitting opposite them narrowed his eyes, thinking, we've already kissed before, so why do you care? Chapter 38 The little guy could only eat it on his own while Anastasia had also eaten a fair share of the ice cream. The man opposite them watched their interactions and couldn't help but find the scene interesting. He was suddenly extremely curious about the identity of the child's father. What sort of man did this woman sleep with to give birth to this child? At this moment, Elliot's phone rang. He took the device out and gave it a glance before picking up the call. Hello, Haley, Elliot, where are you? Can you have dinner with me tonight? I'm at the company. You don't have to work overtime, right? There's something important I have to attend to, B, but I want you with me. I'll call you after I'm done, all right? Elliot coaxed her in his gentlest voice. Anastasia immediately knew that it was Haley. She looked up at the man opposite her and noticed his gentle expression as he coaxed Haley just like a lover would. It looks like Haley never lied after all. It was true that she was someone important to Elliot. President Pressgrave, is Haley your girlfriend? Anastasia's gaze was sharp as she looked at the man in front of her. We're just friends, Elliot explained in a low voice. 
Mr. Handsome is single, he doesn't have a girlfriend, the little guy suddenly testified. She turned to look at her son, and how do you know? He told me himself. He also said that as long as you're willing to marry him, he's willing to marry you too. Mommy, let's not be picky, all right? Just get married. The four-year-old kid was worrying about his mother. Anastasia was dumbfounded. Then, she narrowed her eyes as she shot a warning glare at the man opposite her. What did he tell Jared? However, she was met with a complicated and meaningful gaze. You can consider the proposal, Elliot added in a low voice. She replied without hesitation, I shall not, I quite like Jared and I'm willing to take care of you both all my life. He looked at the little guy and realized that the reluctance in his heart had disappeared without a trace. He was genuinely willing to take care of them. Anastasia had other ideas. She knew that the man had said those words without fully meaning it. He just wanted to repay the kindness and to compensate for the fact that her mother had sacrificed herself to save him. And she wanted this man to remember how great her mother's sacrifice was, and it wasn't something that could be compensated with repaying kindness. Moreover, she was still greatly bothered about the fact that this man had slept with Haley before. She had only kissed him that night, but she was already disgusted about it after she knew about the relationship that Haley and Elliot had. In that case, what were the chances of her marrying him? None. Never, I don't need it. Thanks, Anastasia politely declined. Elliot looked at her as well and their gazes met. One complex and messy while the other calm and clear. After lunch, Anastasia hurriedly left with her son. The little guy didn't forget to look back and bid the man goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Pressgrave. Goodbye, Elliot waved at the little guy. Anastasia had taken the afternoon off, for she wanted to take her son on a visit to the museum in the city. It was already evening by the time they had finished a round in the museum. Anastasia bought some groceries and returned to their apartment. Jared then went to play so that she could focus on preparing dinner. Then, a message notification rang on her phone at this time. It was from Nigel. I'm getting off the plane at 10.00am tomorrow. Will you and Jared come and pick me up? Anastasia thought that she would be holed up at home with her son over the weekend anyway, so meeting Nigel sounded like a good idea. She sent her reply, Sure, see you at the airport tomorrow. Can't wait to see you too. You'll see us when you come back tomorrow. Wait for me, I'll bring gifts. Anastasia smiled as she replied, It better not be the exorbitant ones or I won't accept them. She informed her son about it later that night. The little guy was also elated at the idea of meeting Nigel. After all, Nigel often came over to play with him when they were living abroad, just like a real uncle would. Chapter 39 In a private luxury villa halfway up the mountain, Elia received a call from his grandmother. Since her beloved grandson was coming back, she asked Elia to search for the time to pick him up tomorrow and they would have lunch at the Pressgrave residence right of fear that. Elliot agreed. Later, he asked his assistant to send Nigel's flight information over and saw that he should pick Nigel up at 10.00am tomorrow. That weekend, Anastasia accompanied her son to have breakfast at a restaurant outside at 8.30am. After checking the time, she went toward the direction of the airport at her own pace. Then, she decided to look for a cafe to pass the time in the airport at 9.30 a.m. Anastasia accompanied her son to watch the planes take off by the large windows. Finally, at 9.50 a.m., she led her son toward the airport's arrival section, but it was already crowded with people waiting for their loved ones. Holding her son's hand, she waited in the open space next to the arrivals. The travelers finally emerged one after another. Amidst the crowd was a particularly dazzling figure who soon stepped forward. The man was wearing a blue shirt and casual jeans while a pair of sunglasses was perched on his thick hair. His facial features were handsome and charming, and he was surrounded by a superior aura. In fact, he was more eye-catching than celebrities. Mr. Nigel Jared ran over immediately while Anastasia also rushed over. Nigel immediately pushed his trolley aside, then squatted down and hugged the little boy. Hello, boy. Did you miss me? Yes, 
Yes, I did, Jared nodded. I've missed you too, after speaking, Nigel carried the little boy to place him on the trolley and steadily pushed the trolley toward Anastasia, who also smiled at him as she waited for him to come over. At this moment, at the entrance of another passage, a handsome and mature figure quickly walked in with his assistant Ray. Elliot was late, however, he immediately saw Nigel at first glance and also saw that slender figure as well as the little boy sitting on the trolley at the same time. Ill turned out that Anastasia was also here. Just when Elliot decided to head over, he saw Nigel tightly hugging Anastasia. Seeing that, he halted all of a sudden among the crowd ten meters away. His pupils shrank while he continued looking at the pair who were in a tight embrace. At this time, his mind was filled with extremely complicated thoughts. President Pressgrave, do we still go forward? Ray asked. Elliot looked at the pair still in their embrace indifferently, his handsome face a little ugly. It seems that he doesn't need me to pick him up after all. Let's go back. Elliot didn't wait for Ray to react before he turned to leave. The back of his figure seemed to emanate anger at this point. Anastasia, who was suddenly hugged by Nigel, froze for a few seconds before she patted the man who was hugging her tightly. Enough. You've squeezed me for too long and I'm almost out of breath, Nigel smiled. I've missed you. How can you understand that without me hagging you? Okay, let's go, she said to him. Thus, the group of three walked out of the airport. He didn't let anyone from his family come to pick him up while she had taken a cab here, so they could only wait for a cab. At this moment, a black car drove over and the driver inside was Elliot's driver. Young Master Nigel, please get in the car. Hey, Logan, why are you here? Nigel asked in surprise. Young Master Elliot arranged for me to come, Logan explained while getting out of the car, then hurriedly carry the luggage to place it in the trunk. In the car behind, Elliot, who had not left, sat in Ray's car while staring at the person in front of him. Elliot saw Nigel hug the little boy and kiss him before placing him in the back seat. Then, Anastasia entered the car while Nigel took the front passenger seat. President Pressgrave, it seems that young master Nigel and Miss Tillman have a good relationship, Ray commented. Return to Pressgrave residence, Elliot ordered. Chapter 40 On the way, Nigel received a call from his grandmother. However, since he had already agreed to accompany Anastasia and her son for lunch, he decided to only return to Pressgrave residence for dinner at night. In the restaurant, Nigel talked about his plans to return to the country. He had returned to inherit the family business this time. What exactly does your family do? Can you tell me specifically? An inquisitive Anastasia asked. Nigel gave a mysterious smile. He had deliberately concealed his family background abroad and she had only known him as an ordinary hotel manager. At this moment, he didn't want to hide the truth anymore, so he pointed to the most luxurious hotel outside the window and said, That belongs to my family, Anastasia turned to look out the window. It was a seven-star luxury hotel, yet it turned out to be owned by his family. My family has businesses in 36 countries around the world. The hotel that I interned at abroad is also owned by my family. Anastasia, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hide it from you, he apologized. She smiled. It's okay. I didn't expect you to be the young master of a wealthy family. Don't say that. To you, I'm still me. Nothing has changed, he hurriedly explained. Anastasia shrugged and explained, I'm also lucky to be able to be friends with you. I can proudly say to the outside world that I am friends with you. Nigel looked at her with a wry smile. Why did she just want to be his friend? He wanted to have a more intimate relationship with her. However, he was not in a hurry and could wait for her. In the afternoon, he accompanied Jared to go shopping for clothes and toys. If Anastasia hadn't stopped him, he would probably have moved the entire Lego store home for Jared. She knew that he was wealthy, but he couldn't spoil her son so much because she was afraid that Jared would become a spoiled brat. The little boy was elated today because he had received many gifts, all of which were his favorites. The little boy went to the room to unpack the gifts in Anastasia's apartment. Then, 
She poured a glass of water for Nigel and asked curiously, Nigel, do you know Elliot? He almost choked on the water when he heard that, after which he hurriedly covered his thin lips and coughed. Anastasia, you're not in love with him, are you? After being stunned for a few seconds, Anastasia frowned. Why do you think so? I admit that he is the only man more handsome and more attractive than me in this world. I am afraid that you will fall in love with him, and if that's the case, I won't be able to win the fight, Nigel said somewhat jokingly. You know him. He's my cousin, he explained. Hearing that, Anastasia was shocked and speechless. What? Is Elliot Nigel's cousin? No wonder his family is wealthy. It turned out that their family, Anastasia, I know that he has acquired QR International Group and is now your new boss. Do you like him? She retorted indifferently. No, don't talk nonsense. Do you think I'm such a superficial person? A grinning Nigel immediately relaxed. Of course, I know you have an eccentric character. Otherwise, based on my appearance alone, you would have fallen in love with me a long time ago. Anastasia smiled before she looked at the time and said, Aren't you going back to your family for dinner? Go ahead. It's already 5.30 p.m. Okay, I'll contact you tomorrow then. Nigel returned to the room, said goodbye to the little boy, and then left. She was sitting on the sofa, still lost for words about how she got to know more of Elliot's family. No wonder Elliot didn't allow her to talk about what happened that night. So, was he also afraid of being humiliated? When Monday came, Anastasia sent her son to kindergarten. Seeing how obediently her son went to school, she also went to work with a great peace of mind. As soon as she arrived at the office, she was greeted by everyone's attention. She didn't know what had happened until a female assistant said to her, Miss Tillman, your boyfriend is so handsome. Boyfriend? What boyfriend? Chapter 41 she had just arrived at the office when she saw the young man sitting on the sofa with his legs crossed before noticing the stunning bouquet of red roses on her desk. Seeing all that, she didn't know whether to laugh or to cry. Young Master Nigel, why are you here so early in the morning? Anastasia asked helplessly. I'm here to see your working environment. This office is too small. Do you want me to ask my cousin to change it for you? Nigel asked with a raised eyebrow. No, I like it here a lot, she didn't want to enjoy any extra privileges. I'll accompany you at work and we can have lunch together at noon. He seemed extraordinarily free. Anastasia smiled. You don't have to work? Although I came back this time to take over the family business, I had already asked my dad for a two-week vacation. Nigel's lips curled into a smile. During the period of his vacation, he didn't want to go anywhere. He just wanted to stay by her side. Why don't you wait for me at the calf? You will affect my mood for wood. What? Am I so handsome that you can't concentrate? Nigel narrowed his beautiful eyes. This man had all the right to be this confident. Anastasia was amused by him and snorted. Yes, that's why. Okay, then I'll wait for you at my cousin's office. After speaking, he picked up the bunch of roses and handed it to her. These are for you. Do you like them? Why are you giving me flowers? She still reached out and took the flowers. If you like, I will send you a bunch of flowers every day in the future. No, thank you. Anastasia politely rejected him. Hearing that, Nigel simply gazed deeply at her with affection. See you at noon. After speaking, he reluctantly left. As soon as he left, an excited Grace knocked on the door and came in. Anastasia, wow, he's so handsome. Is he your boyfriend? Without raising her head, Anastasia tittied up her office. He's just a friend. I don't believe it. He's clearly interested in you. Look at these roses. Anastasia was too lazy to explain, so she said to Grace, just get me a cup of coffee. At the president's office, Elliot had arrived late today, but he had already decided to permanently work from here. Compared to the office at Pressgrave Corporation, the working conditions here were not that great. Before he entered the office, his female assistant informed him that a guest had arrived. He stepped into the office and stared at a slender, handsome figure without much surprise. 
Why are you here? He asked lightly. Elliot, I'm here to pass the time. I'll wait for Anastasia to get off work and invite her to lunch at noon. Nigel didn't hide his intention. Elliot sat in his place and turned on the computer to manage his emails while a bored Nigel played games on his phone. The two cousins tacitly agreed not to disturb each other. At this time, Elliot's landline rang, so he reached out to answer the call. Hello, President Pressgrave, do you wish to attend today's departmental meeting? Felicia's voice sounded on the other end. Elliot said that as long as it was a routine meeting of the design department, he had to be notified, so Felicia would ask him in advance every time. Yes, I'll get off work in a while, he responded. Anastasia was also notified that she needed to attend the meeting. She gathered the meeting materials and went out. However, she had just turned a corner when she suddenly bumped into someone along the corridor. Fortunately, she quickly responded and came to a sudden stop inches away from a man's chest. Raising her head, she saw the man's clean and dust-free shirt, then looked over at the man's sexy collarbone, Adam's apple, and perfect jawline. Before she could finish her admiration of the man, he had passed her by and walked indifferently toward the meeting room. So, Anastasia could only follow his footsteps in awkwardness and walk to the meeting room as well. As soon as the door opened, Elliot sat in his seat while her position today was next to him. Noticing that, Alice looked at Anastasia with some jealousy. She felt that Anastasia was merely too lucky. Even though Anastasia had made a few mistakes, she still got to remain in the company with no other punishment either. Thus, Alice deeply suspected that Anastasia had a secret relationship with Elliot. Chapter 42 The subject of today's meeting is that each person will submit a market research report and regular design works at the end of this month. Anastasia and Alice should get ready to participate in the jewelry competition at the end of the month, Felicia announced. Felicia, isn't there a rule in the company that outsiders are not allowed to come in and out of the company at will? Why do Anastasia's family members, friends and boyfriends get to come in? It's not in line with the rules. Alice immediately spoke up. Felicia was also a little awkward at this. She looked at Anastasia and mentioned, Anastasia, tell your boyfriend not to come to the company often. By sending flowers to the company, it will affect other employees in our company. Anastasia's face was slightly hot when she heard that. Does everyone regard Nigel as my boyfriend? Then, she felt a deep and probing gaze on her as well. That's right. Seeing that bunch of roses makes me jealous. Anastasia, your boyfriend is so handsome. How could you dare to bring him to the company? Aren't you afraid that someone will steal him away? Another female designer joked. Okay, I'll talk to him. Anastasia simply admitted that Nigel was her boyfriend since it would be more troublesome to explain otherwise anyway. Elliot's gaze became a little more complicated at that. Thinking of the time when Nigel and Anastasia had hugged each other at the airport, he remembered that the woman did not refuse the man's advances either. Now, she was even openly admitting that Nigel was her boyfriend. After the boring regular meeting was over, Elliot said with a sullen face, Anastasia stays while the others may leave. Everyone in the room felt the surliness of the big boss, so they quickly rose and left for fear of being taken out upon by his anger. Anastasia was also speechless. Why does he have such an ugly expression? When the door of the meeting room was closed, he turned in his chair and an oppressive aura swept over her. Looking at her with cold eyes, he said, You should be aware of my relationship with Nigel, she nodded. I do. What's wrong? Elliot's face became uglier. Remember that you owe me something? He locked eyes with her deeply, exuding inexplicable danger. Anastasia thought for a while, but couldn't remember what she owed him, so she asked, Do I owe you anything? You've forgotten? He flew into a rage all of a sudden because the woman had really forgotten. Give me a hint, how could I have time to remember unimportant things? The man stood up abruptly before clasping her wrist with his long arms. Pushing Anastasia's waist against the table, he pressed down upon her with his body raging with hormones. As Anastasia instinctively leaned back, 
The man's hand held the back of her head. Then, he pinched her chin and raised it coldly before his lips came to cover hers with a strong sense of fury. And so, the kiss fell on the woman's soft lips without any advance notice. It was domineering, rough, and full of aggression as if it was some kind of punishment. Anastasia's beautiful eyes widened in shock. She couldn't believe that this man would do this to her in public. His breath swept through her without her consent, causing her mind to go blank. As such, her first reaction was to be annoyed. She pushed him with all her strength and shouted, Elliot, what are you doing? Didn't you ask me to remind you? This is what you owe me. The man's voice was hoarse, while his eyes were dark, and his words were full of mockery. Taking a deep breath, Anastasia then lifted her hand and wiped her lips with disgust. When she thought that Haley was in a relationship with this man, and that he had touched Haley before kissing her, she felt extremely disgusted. Don't kiss me, Anastasia shouted angrily. If you do this again, I will sue you, Elliot stared at her eyes. She was like a flaming rose. Her lips were incredibly soft, which made him unable to detach himself from her. It even reminded him of the touch of that night five years ago. In fact, it was indeed such a delicate feeling that made him go under. Why does this woman make me feel this way? She's obviously a stranger. Chapter 43 An irritated Anastasia pushed open the door and left. This B-starred actually kissed me. How dare he? Back in the office, she suddenly recalled the last time he was in the hospital. When he rescued her, she said she wanted to thank him, but he said she would owe him instead. So, was this kiss what she owed him? Ugh. In the future, I can owe anything to anyone, but I can't owe this man anything. It's grave. He's simply a beast. Nigel had just finished playing a game when he saw his unhappy cousin walking in. Elliot, what's wrong? It's nothing. Elliot sat down on the chair in a bad mood. Elliot, bourgeois office is so modest that it doesn't match your identity at all. Why don't you return to the Pressgrave Corporation office? What do you care? Elliot snorted lightly. Nigel stared blankly at him. Elliot, are you in a bad mood? Who messed with you? What's your relationship with Anastasia? Elliot asked him all of a sudden. Joy immediately flashed in Nigel's eyes. Well, you know, I like her and I'm pursuing her. Have you succeeded? Elliot looked at the computer screen and asked again in a deep voice. It'll be soon. Nigel was extremely confident that he would definitely capture Anastasia's heart when he launched a series of romantic attacks soon. Don't send flowers to her in the company in the future. It will affect her work efficiency, and it will also make her colleagues have negative opinions of her. Elliot commented Nigel was secretly surprised. How did Elliot receive the news of him sending flowers so soon? Elliot, give me a hand. How about using your power as her boss to give her a vacation and let me take her out to have fun? Or, if you arrange her office to be on the same floor as yours, it will be much more convenient for me to date her, Nigel spoke with a naive smile. Impossible, Elliot snorted coldly. You are the big boss. You have this power, Nigel gritted his teeth and tried again. Elliot raised his eyes icily. You need to depend on your ability to pursue her. Don't expect me to help you. You're so mean. Nigel huffed and continued to play his game. At this moment, a call came in and he answered, Hello, young master Nigel. Are you booking a reservation at Cardi restaurant? Yes, Cardi. Nigel confirmed and hung up the phone. Elliot suddenly and unceremoniously drove him away. If you want to play games, go to the lounge next door. Don't disturb me at work. Nigel obediently rose to his full height and went to the next door. Then, Elliot caressed his upper thin lip with slender fingers. The kiss in the meeting room earlier still lingered in his mind. Surprisingly, the soft touch made him very much wanting more. At this moment, Ray knocked on the door and came in. President Pressgrave, where do you want to have lunch at noon? Elliot's thin lips parted elegantly. Cardi, very well. I'll immediately reserve a place for you. Ray withdrew from the room. In Anastasia's office, 
the woman was still annoyed because all of the ideas in her head had disappeared. All of this was caused by Elliot's sudden kiss in the meeting room. When she thought that this man had kissed Haley before, she felt uncomfortable in her heart. In the future, this kind of thing must never happen again. At noon in the Cardi restaurant, Anastasia and Nigel sat by the window. She was so hungry that she picked up the menu and started ordering thereafter. At this moment, the waiter ushered in another to guests. She glanced curiously at them, and instantly, her beautiful eyes widened at the sight of the figures of Elliot and his assistant Ray coming over. How could it be so coincidental? Looking in the direction that she was looking, Nigel was also surprised. Then, Ray politely greeted him. Young Master Nigel, good afternoon. You, why are you guys eating here too? Would you like to join us? Nigel immediately rose to his full height and walked toward Elliot and Ray. No need. We have work to discuss. Elliot refused and walked to his reserve table, but he chose to sit where he could face Anastasia's way. Nigel was also busy trying to please his love interest, so he immediately returned to his seat. As for Anastasia, she stared at the menu while cursing her bad luck in her heart. How unfortunate it is that I keep bumping into Elliot everywhere. Raising her head, she abruptly glanced past Nigel and her gaze fell on the man at the table opposite holding a cup of tea. Meeting those bottomless eyes, the light in Anastasia's eyes turned cold. Thinking about what this man had done to her in the meeting earlier, she was even madder. Chapter 44 Anastasia, have you missed me after we've been separated for so long? Nigel held his chin and looked at her affectionately with seductive eyes. Anastasia retracted her gaze, and when she looked at Nigel, she smiled. Of course. Then, he took out car keys with an attached crystal keychain. When I miss you, I'll take this out to look at it. What about the one I gave you? You didn't throw it away, did you? She was slightly embarrassed. I think I forgot to bring it back here. You, how could you not properly keep the gift I gave you? I'll buy you another one later, he scolded with a smile. Is it necessary? Yes. I'll buy another pair. One for you and one for me. When we don't see each other, we can look at them and resolve our lovesickness. Nigel was also quite the romantic and all his thoughts were now on Anastasia. Okay, I'll select them and give you one. They must be a matching pair, okay, Anastasia nodded as she smiled. As she looked away, her eyes had once again met the cold eyes belonging to the man sitting not far away from her. For some reason, she felt that Elliot's gaze had become icier as if someone had offended him. Ray was called over for lunch by Elliot today, who said that he had some work to discuss, but after waiting for a long time, Elliot didn't talk about work at all. Instead, Elliot's expression had suddenly become worse, Ray had been with him for five years, and he was the closest person to Elliot, so he knew why Elliot's expression was dark. Soon, the sumptuous lunch came. Anastasia was hungry, so she decided to quickly begin eating. This is delicious. Taste it. Nigel picked up some food with his fork and held it in front of a startled Anastasia. She subconsciously opened her mouth and took a bite. How is it? Is it delicious? He asked with a happy smile. Anastasia's face warmed slightly. She realized that this was something only couples did. However, she still nodded. Yeah, it's delicious. The man on the opposite side looked at their lovey dovey manner with a gloomy face. Facing the lunch in front of him, he had no appetite. Sir, have some lunch. We have to go back to the Pressgrave group for a meeting in the afternoon, Ray tried to persuade his boss. Elliot shouldn't refuse to eat just because he was angry about Anastasia's public display of affection. Anastasia had just finished eating a cheese shrimp and she accidentally had a little cheese sauce on the corner of her mouth. She didn't realize it, but Nigel on the opposite side saw it. Thus, he immediately narrowed his eyes and smiled. Don't move. Anastasia immediately stopped moving. She then blinked her beautiful eyes and looked at him as he stretched out his long arms to gently wipe his fingers across the corners of her mouth. You have sauce on your mouth. At that, Anastasia's face flushed red. 
she hurriedly grabbed her napkin and wiped the corner of her mouth elegantly. Nevertheless, her current expression was extremely shy and dainty in the eyes of those who saw her. Not only was Nigel attracted by her, but even the man at the table opposite them also narrowed his eyes at the sight of her. I'm going to the restroom, Anastasia got up and went off. Not long after she left, Elliot also followed suit. When Nigel turned around, he saw Ray alone. Where's my cousin? He asked. President Pressgrave went out to take a call, Ray replied, although he saw that Elliot was clearly going to the restroom. Oh, Nigel didn't think much about it. In the restroom, Anastasia had just come out after washing her hands when she suddenly saw Elliot smoking in the smoking area next to the corridor. His long fingers were pinching the cigarette as he blew a cloud of smoke that hit his cold but handsome face. She pretended not to see him and passed him while pretending to tidy her long hair. However, just as she approached him, the man's hand elegantly snubbed the cigarette out and as she passed him, he grabbed her with so much strength that she had no way to resist. Thus, she was pushed against the far wall off smoking area. Elliot, what are you doing? It hurts. Anastasia felt that her bones were about to be crushed by him. Chapter 45 The man's eyes were cold and stern as a warning flashed across his eyes. Anastasia, I won't allow you to play with Nigel's feelings. If you don't care about him, don't lie to him. When his slightly smoky breath blew on her face, Anastasia turned away in disgust before she retorted, I am not playing with his feelings. We are friends. If you just want to be friends with him, don't flirt with him. Why do you care? She glared at him at once, wondering why he should meddle in her business. Elliot gritted his teeth and his tone was cold as he responded, I do care. It's my business. What do you care? You can play with other men's hearts, but not Nigel. When did you see me playing with his heart? Don't speak nonsense without evidence, just now. I saw with both eyes, Elliot snorted coldly. He wasn't blind, and he had seen her flirting with Nigel earlier with his own eyes. Anastasia was speechless. After all, she thought that it was just how she and Nigel got along even though they were really just friends. Let go of me. Anastasia then realized that she was being trapped in such a tiny corner by this man, and his breath was thick. Only if you promise to keep your distance from him, the man's gaze was full of warning as she stood in front of this man, Anastasia was filled with repulsion. She didn't feel like complying and preferred to make him angry instead. I don't need you to intervene in my affairs with him, Anastasia raised her eyebrows and spoke stubbornly. Do you want to marry him? Elliot asked with a dark look. Yes, I'll marry him. What's wrong with that? Anastasia sneered. After all, marrying Nigel was fine too. Staring at her coldly, Elliot felt that this stubborn but beautiful face in front of him was really messing with his emotions. In fact, he was annoyed that he didn't know what to do with her. When Anastasia met his gaze, she was stunned too. What is this man going to do? But no matter what, if the man dared to touch her, she would scream. The man's eyes fell on her eyebrows and moved down to her eyes, her nose, and then to her extremely soft red lips. As a matter of fact, he knew how soft it was from his experience. After only staring for a few seconds, his gaze instantly darkened and became dangerous when Anastasia realized what the man wanted to do, he had already pinched her chin domineeringly, and his thin lips were already upon hers. As her mind went blank, Anastasia cursed inwardly about how persistent this man was. However, this man's kiss had an inexplicable kind of power that made her whole body go numb like it was being electrocuted. His kiss was full of possessiveness, and it was so domineering that it was unbearable for her. In addition, this was the smoking area of the restaurant, and anyone would come over at any time. Thus, the nervousness Anastasia felt also made her feel disoriented. This man is really perverted. She pushed him hard with her hands, but her strength was taken away by him. The more she pushed him, the harder he kissed her and entangled his tongue with hers. As they kissed, his big hand restlessly tightened around her waist. It was as if the kiss had awakened the instinctive reaction of any man. 
At that moment, Anastasia suddenly came to her senses. Anxiously, she caught his tongue and bit it hard. The man let go of her in pain while his misty eyes stared at her angrily. Then, she hurriedly ran away from him and out of the place. There was still a sweet smell of his blood lingering in her mouth when she returned to the main dining area. After taking a deep breath, she returned to the table where Nigel was sitting as if nothing had happened. Then, she picked up the glass and drank all the water in one go. He's just too much, just too much. Elliot, this bee starred, is a terrible pervert. Why is your face so red, Anastasia? Are you running a fever? Nigel asked worriedly. I'm okay. I, I still have work in the afternoon, Nigel. I'll head back to the company first. Anastasia had no appetite at all. So soon. In that case, I'll see you off. Nigel got up immediately, and when he got to the counter, he called out, send the bill to the press grave group. Okay, young master Nigel, answered the manager immediately. After a while, Elliot returned to his seat. Looking at the empty seats at the other table, his gaze was unfathomable. President Pressgrave, young master Nigel and Miss Tillman have already paid the bill and left. Okay, Elliot responded. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos.